Hey, it's Tanya here at Nerdy Knitting. Today we're talking about mastering rib patterns. We'll work a two by two rib. We'll look at how rib fabrics work and also read some instructions and look at charts. And stick around to the end because I'm showing you a simple way to do a stretchy bind off. If you want to jump to any point in this video, use the timestamps linked down in the description box. Rib patterns are versatile and they're useful stitch patterns. You can use them on sweater cuffs and collars and hems hat brims, mitten cuffs, scarves, even as an all-over pattern for a sweater. The rib pattern we're working today is a knit two, purl two rib. It's two knit stitches followed by two purl stitches all across the row. If you want to work with me, I have 22 stitches on here so I can start and end with the knit stitch rows. The work is in your left hand, empty needles in your right, the working yarn you can hold in either hand, whichever is easiest for you. So we start with our knit, two, and then we bring the yarn to the front of the work, but don't go over your needles. You come between them. Yarn in the back, bring the yarn to the front between the two needles to purl the next stitch. Purl two, yarn to the back, knit two, yarn to the front, purl two, yarn to the back, knit two, yarn to the front. Now if you accidentally bring that yarn over, what you're doing is creating an extra stitch. You're creating a yarn over right there. So it's important to keep that yarn in between the needles as you're going from front to back. We're on a knit stitch, so the yarn's in the back. To the front. That's where I think it's most common for people to bring it this way, over the needle. And then, even then, can you see I've already, if I knit that stitch, I'm going to have a yarn over right there. And I don't want that in a rib pattern. So, yarn goes between the needles. That's all there is to working a rib pattern. Of course, like knit one, purl one rib would just be one stitch of each. There's many different combinations. You could have a knit three, purl two, a knit four, purl four. Really, it's whatever stitch count you want to use or the look of the rib that you, you like. Okay, so we finished our row. We turn our work. Work in the left, empty needle in the right. Okay, on this row, we have to start with a purl. So bring that yarn forward. Don't go over your needle. See what happens? You put an extra, the head of that stitch comes up over. So it's important that your work comes underneath the needle to the front. Move that head of the stitch down out of the way if it's in your way. Insert and purl that stitch. To the back and knit. Bring it forward between the needles. And knit, purl. Back between the needles and knit. And that is all you need to know for knitting rib. The most important thing is where that yarn goes. You have to move it between the needles, not over the top of them. So let's finish this row, and then we'll look at some charts for ribbing. Okay, so we've got our two by two rib. You can see it's quite stretchy. But, how would this look on a chart? Well, let's look at the two by two first. Here's a chart of what we just worked on the needles. We have 22 stitches, and everything is in vertical columns. Knit stitches, purl stitches, knit stitches, purl stitches. So they stack up on top of each other in those columns. And when you look at the fabric, the knit columns are more prominent. They come to the front. And those purl columns 
they recede and go in behind. And this movement is what gives us our stretch. Here's another example. This is knit one, purl one rib. You can see the knit stitches, they're very prominent. And the purl stitches hide in between. They recede into the background. That movement between knit and purl is what causes the stretch. There are two important parts of rib stitches. You're looking for stretch. That's how far it goes from its natural state, like this. Its natural state is to pull in to how far it will stretch. That depends on the pattern. It could depend on the size of the needle you use or even your cast on or bind off row. You can see that's only going to go as far as that cast on edge will allow it to go. So if you bind off too tightly or cast on too tightly, your, your rib is not going to stretch maybe as far as you want it to go. The other thing to consider is the elasticity. That's not the same as the stretch. Elasticity is refers to how well it goes back to its original shape. If it stretches out and it stays that way, it doesn't have much elasticity. If it snaps back into shape, it's more elastic. Here, let's take a look at this sample. This is another 2 by 2 rib. It's quite elastic. This is its original state. We can stretch it. This one's, oh, there we go. We can stretch it quite far. And when we let go, it goes back. Not quite as far, but it's quite, it's elastic. So when you're deciding on the rib you should use for your pattern, you want to consider those two things. The okay, so here's our chart. And the written instructions are right here. If you're going to work it flat, the first row, knit two, purl two. I wanted an even number of stitches, but I wanted to balance the pattern, so I put an extra row of knits over here. So you knit two, purl two, and if you don't know how to read a chart, that little star means you go back and do this again until you get to your final two stitches, and then that's what you do on the last two. And then when you turn the work, you'll start with a purl row. Now, what about a knit one, purl one? Like this pattern right here. Could work that one slightly differently. Let's look at the chart. This one, I didn't put an extra column of knit stitches on the edge. We have knit one, purl one, all the way across. So every row is exactly the same. Remember, this chart represents what the front of your work is going to look like. So when you turn your work, it's not a purl stitch you're working right there. You're working a knit stitch, so it will look like a purl on the front. It pushes the head of that stitch to the front like a purl stitch. And there's our written instructions. You knit one, purl one. And there's our star, and that's telling us to repeat that pattern to the end of the row. Another tip, instead of using a chart, is just to look at your stitches. Once you've established the pattern, you've worked the first row, you're just going to work what's on the needles. A lot of patterns will say, knit the stitches as they present. All of that means is that you need to purl a stitch if you see a purl stitch, or knit a stitch if you see a knit stitch, when you're working this particular pattern. So I'm on a wrong side row, so it starts with a purl stitch. I don't need to refer to my pattern my written instructions or my chart, I can just work what's on my needles. Now you might be wondering, what is it that causes rib to stretch? It's this movement right here. Taking that yarn from the back of the work to the front, put some slack between these two stitches. And that repeated process of going back and forth between those columns of knits and purls is what helps that rib to stretch. Now if we took these, let's pop these right off for a second. You'll see right there, that's a knit stitch, it's to the front. The purl stitch is to the back. You can see, instead of being in a straight line, these stitches are curving around. And all of that extra slack is what gives us the stretch that we need in our rib patterns. Try to get these back on the needle. Split that stitch, let's fix that. All right, so 
Let's finish our row. Now let's bind off our rib pattern. When you have rib pattern, you generally want a stretchy bind off to give your rib some stretch. If you bind it off too tightly, you're not going to be able to stretch it as much as you would like. And I don't feel like doing a sewn bind off and I don't want a lot of stretch. I just want a fairly good amount. So we're going to use the basic bind off with a slight change. Now the first thing we're going to do, we're going to bind off in pattern. That means I'm going to knit a stitch or purl a stitch as it presents as I'm binding it off. I'm not going to just knit across the row. We'll do our first two normally. Knit the first two stitches. Bind off that first stitch. Now, after this, we're going to do this a little bit differently. You're going to purl. That's a, the next stitch is a purl stitch, so I'm going to purl it. But I'm not going to drop it off the needles. I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to pull some slack out because it's that top, that bind off at the top. We want that to be loose. So that these stitches are going to be looser there. And now I've dropped that stitch off. Let's repeat that. Keeping that on the needle makes you pull out more yarn to bind off and that gives you a slightly stretchier bind off. I bind off that stitch, dropping that stitch off now. Okay, the next stitch is a knit stitch. So I will knit it, but I'm going to leave it on the needle for now while I go over and bind off another stitch. And once I bound it off, I will drop that stitch off. And you can see that's giving us a little more stretch than a basic bind off would. We're making these stitches just a little bit bigger than they normally would be. Knit, but leave it on there. Bind it off. Next one's a purl. Leave the stitch on there as we bind it off. And now we can drop it off. That's all there is to it. You just leave that stitch there and it makes that causes you to pull up extra slack in that bind off stitch. Bind it off and drop that stitch off. Knit. So this bind off would work whenever you want more stretch than a basic bind off, but you don't want a very stretchy one that might ruffle the top of the fabric. It's just a good basic stretchy bind off, but all you do is the work, you work the basic bind off, but you just leave that stitch on until you've bound off the previous stitch and then you pull it off. Here, so I will finish working the row and then show you how this looks. And there you go, I finished the last stitch. All we need to do is cut our yarn pull that final loop through. And there we have it, a nice stretchy bind off, using the basic bind off with a slight difference. If you like to get a bit nerdy with your knitting, click the subscribe button down below.